everyone. Welcome back to Creatively Crafted Life. My name is Melanie, and today is another Calling Creatives with Nikki from Nikki Scrapbooking Adventure. Hi, Nikki. Hello. How are you? I am doing fantastic. I hope everybody has come over here because they saw our video on Nikki's channel on Monday. If you haven't, please be sure and go and check it out because whew, Nikki was excited. <laughs> and she had a great kit to share, which is what we are talking about today. Yes. So we are talking about some counterfeit kits we made for the Wildflower and Honey Collection by Vicki Booten. Yeah, so Nikki had pointed this kit out a couple weeks ago and said, so let's do a counterfeit kit. So for those of you that aren't aware, a counterfeit kit is basically where we take inspiration from an existing kit or collection that's out there and use our stash. So try not to go out and purchase new things to make this work, but use our stash to either get a look and feel or just to be inspired by the original collection. Now, Wildflowers and Honey is a slightly older kit and it's no longer available that I can find. You might find the odd paper here and there. So it's actually quite perfect for doing a counterfeit kit on. Yes, yes. You can buy it on AC Digitals, but that's a digital collection. So you'd have to print it and cut it and stuff all of yourself. Or you can use your stash to make something new. And, and if you are, have followed me at all this year, you know that I'm all about using your stash. So it's interesting that... Um, Nikki mentioned AC Digital. So I actually went on their web page and printed out the paper inspiration. So this would be what you would purchase if you got the digitals. And it's representative of the papers of the collection. Now, I'm going to have to admit that little sliver <laughs> was not a lot to go off of. Um, but that's okay. It's not meant to be an exact um, interpretation or a literal interpretation of the collection. It's more about being inspired and um, going from there. Now, Nikki was very, you were very inspired by the colors in the collection. Yes. And that's part of the reason why I picked it was because I am tired of the boho. I don't want the browns <laughs> and the pinky browns and the yellow browns. I want the bright, happy colors. So that's definitely why I picked this <laughs> which is which is good and we all have plenty of that in our stash so why why not reimagine it to make it a little bit more fun and exciting I I hmm, I'm trying to think what's the right word I don't naturally gravitate towards Nikki's aesthetic I love it I think it's fun I think it's exciting myself it's almost like it's just a little too bold <laughs> like it's just a little over the top for me and so then I often will struggle, you know, finding the right photos to fit the look, but that's just my own personal, personal aesthetic. And so I did kind of, I think, I'll let you guys, you know, tell me if this is true or not. I think I did scale it back a little bit. So it's not quite as intense. And I did not go for the literal color interpretation to the T. So the color scheme should be there, but not quite as literal as, as, as Vicky's was. I also probably went more literal, literal in trying to match the papers. So in the sense of trying to find something that had a similar look and feel. Now, when I say that, I don't mean the pattern has to be exactly the same, but what I noticed in this collection, there was some distressing, there's some mixed media. She used a lot of geometrics. She used like a lot of stripes. Um, she's got a bold floral that kind of thing. So you'll see that I've kind of mixed and matched the patterns across the colors. Does that make sense? Or if it doesn't, maybe it will once you see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm excited to see. The way I have this configured or the way I'm going to talk through this is to kind of show you, and I will put this up in the corner somewhere, is to show you which paper I was inspired by and what I chose for it. So it's a little, little less color oriented and more piece for piece, if you will. So my collection is not quite as big. <laughs> I think there's 24 sheets on, on this sheet. So that's what we've got. And enough rambling. Let's get showing, right? So like you, Nikki, I chose from a variety of different manufacturers. It's amazing what you'll find when you go through your stash, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And you'll definitely have to check out Monday's video to see my thought process and all that I added to my kit. Yeah. I only, so here's a spoiler. I only did paper. 
<laughs> I actually did not go full on with all the embellishments and stuff. That being said, I did take also inspiration from some of the icons. So she uses butterflies, owls. Um, I think those were two of the big ones that I noticed. Hearts, you know, that kind of thing. So you'll see that in here as well. So the very first paper that I picked, um, if you look at the image, it is a aqua teal turquoise. I don't know whatever color you want to call it. Um, and it kind of has a vintage background. I don't know. It kind of, I always call it wallpaper, but I don't know. There's probably a term for it. Anyways, this is the one that I chose. It is a doodle bug, kitten smitten. It's got the quatrefoil design on it. So pretty close in interpretation, I think, on that one. Quadrifoil, is that the shape? Yeah, it's that kind of four arched kind of kind of shape. Words are escaping me today. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's that particular. She actually has it in her navy. If you look at her navy piece of cardstock, it's the exact same image. So then the second one is a stripe and it's a multicolored. And you would think I, you know, multicolored stripe should be easy enough to pick, right? No, it was so hard. I could not find a multicolored stripe that matched this collection. Well, and not only that, she had a couple multicolored stripes, I think. She had a diagonal one and then another one that looks like kind of a, a, a painted stripe. And I'm like, okay, I, I don't have enough. <laughs> so instead, what I chose was from Bella Boulevard. It's Make Your Mark. And it's a geometric with the dot, um, half circles. Those are not the colors in the collection, Melanie. I know. But <laughs> there are colors in here. You just have to look a little bit closer. There's the red, there's the orange, there's the yellow, there's the blue, <laughs> black. So they are there. There just happen to be pink and like a purple. green and purple. So again, not, not exact interpretation <laughs> going for a look and feel. Now, that's a good point too, is that because I've swapped out some of the multicolors, for slightly different color scheme, you'll notice that some of my supporting pieces will also have changed color. So the third cardstock on here is a very dark piece of cardstock with a bold leafy print floral on it in like an orange and pink. I had nothing like this in my stash. Nothing. 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 So I went with the idea that it has a contrasting between a dark and a light, right? And that it's a bold print. And I pulled this paper, where is it from? K and Company Antique Garden. How old is this one? Does it even have a year oh, on here? Last year. Um, it's got the birds on it. So again, not an exact interpretation, but the birds are represented in the collection. And then this navy and yellow is in the collection. Very different. Very different. <laughs> so does that match your multicolor you just put up? Sort of does. I don't know that I would pair it with this one, to be no. honest. Yeah. Um, but I have some other papers in here that do match this. And you'll find that that's what ended up happening in here is that not everything matches everything. And that's okay. I would pick and choose which does work. And if you ever look at some of the kits that people put out, not everything does match. Right. Um, collections tend to be a little bit more coordinated, but kits tend to have a little bit more variety in them. So, so that's what I was going with. Drives me nuts. Now, <laughs> the next piece, the next piece is the piece that you had actually from her collection. It was the green or uh, the green leaf print, right? Yeah. I, I didn't have anything, nothing in that dark green that worked with the papers I had. So I really just swapped it out for something completely different. So I swapped it out for this red and it's got a geometric print in it. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah, it's tone on tone. I mean, that's kind of what that tone on tone gray can't tell in the Exactly. The so picture. it just looks like a solid green. Exactly. And it's when I was looking at the collection overall, how I my approach was I started with the multicolor, right? Figured those out. Then I went, okay, which colors could I match closely? Okay, figure that out. And then it was, where do I have gaps? And what can I substitute to make it look somewhat usable? Because <laughs> we don't want too much 
variety. So when you say multicolors, are you talking about the multicolors in the picture? That's where you started? Yeah. So like I took, for instance, like the bolts, the, the stripe, and I said, okay, what, what multicolor am I going to use for the stripe? This is the one. Okay. But now I'm looking at, okay, there's a red in here. Can I use this with that? Gotcha. So that's kind of kind of the approach that I went with. Um, this was Photo Play Book Nerd. Now on the back side of this one, it is also a multicolor and it's bold. The only problem that threw me off on this one, it's got the navy and it's got the red, but the green was way too green. <laughs> it's neon on the camera. Yeah. It looks neon. Yeah. yeah. But it is a Nikki color. A uh, Vicky. It is a Nikki color. <laughs> It is a Vicky color because she does use that color, but I didn't pick it for that one. I picked it for the red. Okay, then the next one is another multicolored. It is the hexagon, small hexagon that kind of look like dots. And I actually don't know where this paper came from. I'm thinking, I don't know actually where it came from. I thought maybe it was Stampin' Up, but I don't see the Stampin' Up label on here. So it is a dot in multicolor. And I don't know if you can see the colors, but it's got everything in here. It's got the navy, the aqua, the orange, the red, the yellow, all of those colors are in here. Okay, so, but you had a circle multicolored. That more matches your, your craft multicolor with circles. No, I'm, I've used something else for that one. So this, this okay. is kind of the representative of the dot. It's just, of the hexagon, it's just smaller. Okay. So... I mixed and matched patterns as well, which is going to be interesting because I do have a hexagon, but it's in a different color later on. <laughs> okay. So I skipped the cut apart. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not a huge cut apart fan. I'm like, I've got plenty of, of um, cards. What do you call project life cards or whatever? If I, if I really feel so inclined, I'll go pull them. So the next one that I focused on, oh. <laughs> huh? sorry, that tone meant no, <laughs> no, <laughs> probably not. I probably should get rid of them to be honest, but uh, I hang on to, I hang on to them for some reason. So the next one is a navy blue quatrefoil pattern, which I've already used the quatrefoil elsewhere. So it only makes sense that I swap up the pattern for this one. And I've done the navy blue with the leaf print. So I didn't get it in on the green but now I have it in with the navy. I love that paper. What is that? So this is Amy Tangerine Slice of Life. Mm, I missed out on that one. Yeah. Then the other side has small hearts with blue, the different blues and yellow. So obviously very usable, maybe not like the full color scheme, but you could probably make mix and match with some of the other papers in here. Okay, moving on. We've got a aqua, I guess teal turquoise kind of distress background so i have an old 2009 wow abbey, abbey road <laughs> in my mind's eye piece of cardstock that is just kind of like this model distress look and mm -hmm. i think that's pretty good that's a pretty good match for that yeah. one i feel like that's um, the only one that's matched <laughs> yeah pretty much <laughs> pretty much I'm okay with that. <laughs> okay, so the next one is an orange and it is like a hashtag, was it to hashtag? I can't tell on here. Or is it leaf? I don't know. It, it was really looks like orange. It I can't see any pattern on my paper. Yeah, when you look online, I think it's like it's like lines. Like it's got a bunch of lines on it that are randomly. So I like you, I struggled with the orange. So I had to go with what I had in my multicolors. So this orange is going to be completely off. <laughs> I'm warning you now, it's completely off. And I picked two. One is more of a peachy color and one is more of an orange. And they are less saturated. So definitely has like a gray, gray tone to them. So I have from Doodlebug, Under the Sea, it's a hashtag orangey color. Okay. Uh, pulling off of the idea of having this line texture in the background. And then I also had this pink fresh paper from Joyful Day. And it's a light peachy color. And it's got those hash lines again, but in shapes of triangle. I think this one better matches the pattern than the other one. 
but this one is well not close closer to the color <laughs> yeah but that the second one that you pulled up almost it almost reads like a light tan instead of even an orange right right yeah in person it, it definitely is on the peachy tone but you'll see that with the next sheet why why i picked those colors <laughs> so the next one what are we talking about the heart right that's it's one paper i really want in my collection i want that paper so bad yeah it's so pretty um this is from mom life from bella boulevard oh yeah so again really more the the pattern than the colors per se, but the colors are similar colors to other ones that I've already chosen. So that multicolored I showed earlier is very similar. But you can see how now this peachy color works with that paper. Yes. Okay, then the next one's another turquoise one, another background, but it's got some writing on it, it looks like. Um, color matches off and I actually went with a solid so this is from Simple Stories Little Princess and I call it a solid but it does have like a hash very very faint hash textured background to it and my thought is is to pull out a stencil that I have that has script writing on it and just go over top of it with some ink I just didn't have time to do that Oh, fun. Okay, so the next one is the craft with the big circles. <laughs> I had nothing like this in my stash. Nothing, nothing at all. Yeah. And um, what craft I did have to try and incorporate, I did not like it with what other patterns I've, cho I've chosen. So guess what? I completely changed it. <laughs> Are you sensing what? a theme here? <laughs> well so, okay, you've changed a lot of what you have already. I'm sensing a theme. You're changing a lot of stuff. Did you not like this original kit? I did. I do like it. I just don't have the exact, like, I don't have a lot of these colors, like these really bright, bright, bright colors. I have a lot of pinks. I have a lot of turquoise, yes. But they aren't, like, at that bold level. And then the, the multicolors, which is really what glues the collection together. I just didn't have anything remotely like it in those color schemes. So what am I going to do? <laughs> you know, I, I, you kind of have to pick with what you got. So that's kind of where I went and I'm still happy with how it turned out. I think it still is a nod to it in the sense of I've got a lot of the same design elements. It still is fairly bright. It's not completely like desaturated or, you know, pastels or anything like that, but it is very different very different. Do and you think you would use your kit? Uh, well, <laughs> I'm not going to use it as a kit. I'm actually going to break it down into page kits, but that's not so much because of the kit itself, but because of the way that I have decided I like to scrapbook. I don't actually like big kits. I have learned over time is it's too much of the same thing. And so I get bored with it. And so then what's end, what ends up happening is I end up having all these partial kits everywhere until I feel like using it again. And so I will probably dismantle this and put them into page kits instead. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So it's still a good exercise because I probably would never have paired some of these together that I'm going to pair with as page kits. Um, so it was still, it was still fun and it was still good. And it was good to think about things in a little bit of a different way in the sense of like this one. Okay. What is it about that paper that adds to the collection? Right? So one, it's a different color. And then the other one is it's a pretty bold print. So I also looked at where the other craft is thinking that I need to keep those aligned. And the other craft is a, um, a text it's got text on it mm -hmm. so that keeping that in mind I actually swapped out the craft for white okay and I did, and I did not go multicolor at all instead I went foil Ooh, yeah so and in keeping with the theme of the hexagons it's a white foiled and I think it still adds a bold element to it because of the foiling the hexagons are fair, fair size. They're not tiny. They're larger than some of the other ones I have. And I think the white will just provide something a little bit more contrasty. Um, do I have white in here? Yes. Some of the multicolors I do. But I also 
with some of the multicolors have a lot of color. There's not a lot of white in them. So I think that'll work. Red. <laughs> As you sensed, my multicolors don't have a bright, bold red in them. And so I was struggling to find a good amount of reds, but not too much, given that I was making other substitutions. So I actually, for this next one, swapped it out completely, but I went with a similar pattern. So I went with like a pinky red. You see Whoa. that? <laughs> right? Completely wow. different. Thing. <laughs> yeah, but the pattern is almost exactly the same. It's kind of got that square look with an emblem in the middle. So yeah, completely different. I want to see a picture of your entire kit laid out. <laughs> I'll have to take a photo of it. Okay, the last one in the first series, this is a no-brainer. Black and white stripe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you don't have a black and white stripe in your in your collection, I would be surprised. Like in your stash, I'd be surprised. Um, not everybody may have a bold one, but you could su substitute it out for a smaller stripe easily, easily enough. So you Thanks. really went paper by paper. I did. I Literally. did not. I know. I did not. Yeah. Which is interesting, right? But that's because you were very excited by the color scheme itself. And I was more like, I don't know where to go with it. So I just started with one step at a time it was kind of the approach. But yeah, I tried to simulate it as closely as possible, but not at all. <laughs> if that makes sense. Not at all. If you were to put our kits together, like put them side by side, you would not see a resemblance. Exactly. Exactly. But I'm hoping you can see where, like how I was inspired by it. I'm hoping. Maybe I failed. I don't know. The viewers can let me know if that's the case. So the next one is yellow and it does have a geometric, more circular kind of swirly print on it. I didn't have anything like that. So I just picked a yellow with like a hashtag. Yeah. Okay. Butterflies. I know I have butterflies in my collection, but I could, did not have any butterflies that fit the color scheme that I clearly have been developing. That's very different. And I found from, I think this was a Dear Lizzie paper. It wasn't a paper pad. Oh, birds. I've got birds. So similar colors. It's got the red, the pinks, the blues, the greens in there. So I went with that. Then we got a leafy turquoise print. Again, I had nothing that looked like this at all. So I dropped it down to more of a, a greeny aqua color. And I picked up on the fact that, that the, in this case, it's kind of got like a, a lighter imaging on top. And I just went with this is this is the stretch but with just a diagonal stripe so it's that tone you know it yeah. is what it is yeah, okay yeah. I feel like out of all of them that probably matches the inspiration the best <laughs> besides yeah. your first one I feel like your first one was like dead on and then this one matches yeah well this one should be a pretty good match too because it's a black hexagon okay yep right um this one does have every every now and then it's got a white hexagon in the middle but it's it's black hex gone. So that would drive me nuts. They just needed to color it all black. <laughs> See, and I like that. It kind of reminds me of a dot pattern. Yeah. Okay. I went literal with this next one too. Simple and sweet from Pink Fresh. Yeah. A lemon. I didn't have a single lemon. Oh, I guess there's the simple stories lemon twist, but that's not the same yellow. Well, no. you're. I mean, that yellow matches yours, but like the simple stories would not match my kit. Right. And it's, it doesn't have the green leaves like Vicky's does, but it has like the, the tealy turk, whatever color, that aqua mm -hmm. color in there, which does match the rest of my kit. So very happy with that one. If the viewers know what to call that color, please let us know because I don't know either. They're yeah. all the same. <laughs> I could call it mint. I could call it green. I could call it blue. I could call it aqua. <laughs> like, I don't know what it is. I think um, Janet calls it, uh, what does she call it? Um, jadeite? Yes. I think that's what she calls it. I don't know. And there's so many different tones and shades of it. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, between, it's between green and blue. <laughs> Whatever that color is. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, so then the next one is the tan with the script. And like I said, I swapped out the, the tan for white. So I've got a Felicity Jane text. 
So that's a pretty easy swap. And then we got some more cut aparts, which I, which I skipped. And then we got the elusive blue that you were looking for. And yeah. I did not have any of that. Actually, that's not true. I actually do have some of that in my stash, but it's not in any of my color, multicolors. Yes. And so I opted not to go that route. And I picked a, I guess it's that, that, it's that same green again, greeny blue. And it's got a blue geometric print over top of it. So again, the pattern's very similar to the original. Yes. Very similar. And again, this just fits this just fits better with the rest of my collection. That's pink fresh, right? Yes. This was pink fresh, keeping it real. And I guess if I really wanted to use cut aparts, I got those on the back that probably could it work for probably some of it. too. <laughs> yep. <laughs> then we get the black and white or off-white floral. Now, Vicky's florals very bold. And I did actually find something that was very similar. But what I was finding was that a lot of my patterns were big and I needed something a little bit in between. So a lot of the tone on tones were fine and smaller maybe, but they were tone on tones. So I decided to go white with a small floral. And this is another Felicity Jane. So it's just white with a small floral. And I think that was a better scale for, for my collection than to go bold. Okay, then we've got a dark navy, I think. It looks a little, it doesn't look quite black. So I have, oh boy. <laughs> this one's old. This is 2007 old. <laughs> From my mind's eye, confetti. I remember buying this piece of paper. Isn't that funny? Um, I remember buying this paper because I wanted to use it for a trip to um, the Bahamas because I thought it would be a good it would be a good water kind of paper. Now I know Bahamas uses turquoise, but like a good background. So that is the piece that I picked for the Navy. I think that I, one works okay. Okay, let me another stripe. Diagonal. That's uh, a it, yeah, I didn't have a diagonal, but it's bold. And so again, looking at my color scheme, this is what I came up with. So not as much contrast as Vicky's, but that's okay. I'm yeah. cool with that. And then we've got a red again, and I can't remember what the pattern is on this one. I think it's just Look, a model background, right? Yeah. yeah. So this one, I actually went more for color than pattern. Hey. So it's a red, and it has small dots on it. This one here is scenic route. This is another old piece of paper. I don't even know how old this is. This is probably like 2007 or earlier. This is the backside very bold. You could argue that this could replace the circle on the craft with that that imagery. So but I picked it for this side. Okay, now we get to the bold floral. I think hers is just like a corner section. Mm -hmm. I went all over. Pull on, full on this floral. This is from Chanel, box of crayons. Oh, I don't have that collection. It was a big floral. Wow. <laughs> so again, this red works really well with this. That pinky color that I had earlier worked really well with it. And here's the surprising piece that works really well with it, which is the last one, which is kind of like a, it looks like a stripe, but it's like not, what is it, disjointed? Like it's cut off and staggered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. And I didn't realize this until after I picked it for sure, but it's, they're the exact same colors. Like. Wow exact same colors so these were the two pieces i actually started off with that led to the rest of the collection i'm calling it a collection. Um, <laughs> so what do you think is like if you were to define your kit which paper would it be i would say i would say it's probably the floral yeah because if you look at this floral it's got the red it's got the orange, it's got the blue, it's got the aqua, it's got the green, it's got the white. Like to me, it really has all the colors that I'm trying to draw out in here. Mm -hmm. And it may not be the exact same colors as all of the other pattern, like multi-patterns, but I don't tend to mix and match multi-patterns a ton. I usually am someone that takes a multi-pattern and a solid and another solid and use that. That's kind of my go-to formula. So but for a sneak peek on my video, if you haven't seen it on Monday, 
I would say a floral is also my main piece, but you can see from my little sneak peek here that we definitely had different color schemes. Yeah. Like yep. completely. <laughs> <laughs> I I basically introduced way I introduced way more pink. I I scaled back on the orange and red and introduced pink basically. Oh, well, I had no green really no green at all yeah. maybe that's probably the substitute i substituted pink for the green yeah, yeah. interesting very very interesting but mm -hmm. i did not bother to pick any any additional supplies again because i'm going to turn these into page kits and i don't tend to store um stickers and die cuts and stuff with it plus the other thing i found is that if i start having too many kits and collections around that have um pieces tied up in them that they just sit there and don't ever get used whereas if I kind of leave those things more like as a general part of my collection I'm more likely to use them as I go about basically at the end of the day I don't use kits from start to finish do you know what yeah. I mean like I don't finish a kit usually well I don't finish a kit because I have too many kits <laughs> <laughs> But I yeah. love being able to pull out my bag and it has everything I possibly could need right at my fingertips. And I don't have to go to my room to find other things. And I get that. That's totally, totally the appeal. And 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 I would say that's a great selling point of them. I just know myself is that I just, I don't know. I just don't tend to use them. So page kits are my, my go-to. I'd much rather just go pull a few pieces of cardstock out, use that for the one layout, and then go find supplies and stuff to match. Now, that being said, I did think about going in and pulling some stamps and dies that would go with it because there's a lot that I have in my collection. Like outline flower stamps like you used for yours definitely would work. And, you know, if I didn't have so much already pre-made... <laughs> you know, store-bought, I probably would love making more embellishments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so thinking about that, when you have your page kit, do you tend to go grab like a store-bought or do you make your own? I've been using store-bought. I've been on this kick of like, I need to use up my stash. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, it's interesting. We were talking about this last night on the Zoom that I host over on my Facebook channel. And I tend to feel like I need to use up my consumables because I have so much and it just doesn't make sense to go and create more when I need to use. But then on the other hand, I have all these stamps and dies that I should use <laughs> because, you know, I've invested money in them. So I'm not sure what the right balance is and I don't think I'm quite there. Yeah. I've enjoyed make like in my kit spoiler, I have pre-made embellishments and I pull in some other collections that you probably have. That would match Vicky Booten's color scheme. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I also kind of went hog wild and made my own embellishments. So yeah. I have a little bit of mix. I think that's great. I think it is good to make your own embellishments. And I think as a creative people that that is part, you know, why not make that part of your process? But mine just right now, currently, I'm just not in that state. So I need to get out of it. <laughs> make my no, own stuff. No, I think you well, use your stuff, you know, yeah. I don't think you need to get out of it. I think it's just more a matter of, I don't know if it's guilt associated with having all this stuff and not using it. You know, like I look at my stamp collection, it's massive. And I have so many stamps in there that I've never used, which is like ridiculous. <laughs> but I look at them and I go, oh, I can make this. I can make that. Yeah, you can make all of those things. Now you just go and make them. That's where I need to be. It's like, yeah, just go and make them. <laughs> Yeah. But, you know, maybe one day, maybe one day I'll have a little more time and I can spend a little bit more on the process instead of just trying to get it done for the next the next thing. I don't know. We'll see. When you were going through this, um, you had mentioned that you started purging. Did you feel like you while you were looking for your kit, you started that process? Like that's what inspired you to go through your paper and get rid of some stuff? Absolutely. Because what was ending up happening was I was flipping through these stacks of papers and I'm like just bypassing big chunks of it. Not not even so much because the color didn't match, but because I just wasn't inspired by some of it. And I just was like, okay, you, this is wasting your time every time you do this to flip through stuff that you're not interested in using. So why not let it go? 
And so yes, now I'm now I'm working on purging more of more of my my stash. Um, there's also the other side effect is that my room is just very full. It's very very full. It's it's. I know I've been working on this for a couple of years. How do I put this? Two inches of paper is a lot of paper, but it doesn't give you a lot of extra space. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's only giving you two inches of space, but uh, two inch more additional inches of space, but it's maybe like a hundred sheets, you know, or maybe even more. I don't know. I never counted, but you know what I mean? Like it's, you get rid of a lot to gain very little, but yes. yet I'm at maximum capacity. So that just tells you how much stuff I have. <laughs> yeah. And we talked about this, I think on the other call, um, that scarcity mindset, like close to my heart is closing. Yeah. And it's not going to be around anymore. And so then there's this panic of what have I been thinking about for so long to buy? I need right. to go buy it. Now. And and I think, you know, the way the industry is kind of ebbing and flowing, but I think it's definitely on the on the ebbing side out as opposed to rising up that, you know, well, I need to keep some of the stuff because what happens if, right? And here's the thing at the end of the day, some of this stuff, even if what happens if I'm still not going to use because it's not inspiring to me. So I might as well just, just let it go. And I still, I still will have plenty. I still yeah. will have plenty. <laughs> um, I don't think there's any way in this lifetime I can use up what I have. And I know realistically, I'm still going to go and buy some new stuff as new stuff comes out. Mm -hmm. um, I still have to learn to be a little bit more selective in what I purchase. Um, but that's a conversation for uh, April, I think, right? We're going to talk yeah. about what we do when when uh, National Scrapbook Day sales come out. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Yes, what we're going to buy, what we're not going to buy, if we're going to buy, where we're going to buy. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a yeah. good conversation. We did this last year, but I think we were both kind of in a different mindset last year. Yeah, we definitely were on a low spend kind of uh mindset at that point right mm -hmm. or coming off of one yeah I don't know I don't know we'll see we'll have you'll you'll see right <laughs> you'll have to see in April so make sure you like and subscribe uh so that you're notified when that uh conversation posts but that will be our next conversation and uh I think that is all we have to cover for today. I hope you guys are inspired and that perhaps you look at your stash in a different way, you know, take inspiration from existing or past lines that you have found inspiring and pull from your stash. It can be literal or it can be interpretive and either or is great as long as you end up using your stash and get crafting. Thanks, Nikki, for hanging out with me. And thanks to you, all the viewers. And until next time, Happy crafting.